Hi, this is Brett G. And I'm Jim D. And we're here for another Chatterbox. Chatterbox. All right. Today's, Brett, today's subject. Uh oh, here we today's, go. Yep. Today's topic. Okay, first, this, the usual disclaimer <laughs> total opinions backed with a little bit of common sense. Let's call it that. And even, um, less, even less actual knowledge. No. <laughs> That's exactly exactly but uh yeah so again you know it's like everybody's got a different you know it's my 10 by 10 rule 10 different people are gonna have 10 different ideas whatever this isn't to hack on anybody or say anybody's wrong or right this is just my opinion the way i think about today's subject which is which is uh paint, paint. color accuracy, accuracy. i thought we already oh, well. said we probably did, but I'm just reiterating in case our, I, we, I lost our uh, uh, our audience with that little disclaimer. <laughs> There's an oxymoron: accuracy, paint color. <laughs> exactly. Bingo. Bingo. And the thing of it is, we're not even going to be able to surface. I don't think on this because there are so many facets of it, and uh, so we'll just be like jumping all over tarnation with this one. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So here's here's my here's my beginning thoughts and uh, first of all first of all let's talk about paint manufacturers just real briefly because you can have I'm telling you there you, you get any ten paint manufacturers okay and take their Dunkelgeld which is German dark yellow. You're talking and modern, modern paint manufacturers. Like modern paint manufacturers, uh, modern uh, hobby paint manufacturers. Let, okay. let, let me clarify that. Yeah. Uh, the hobby paint manufacturers. And all 10 of them, they're going to be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. You know, and is are any of them like wrong? Any of them right? I, I don't know. Not really. It depends, I guess. Depends. But, and, and uh, the funny thing is, I use that uh, particular example, Gelb, is boy, if you want to start a fire, a dumpster fire, is just bring up, you know, what's the correct color for Dunkel Gelb on a form or something? Because it'll start out civil and it'll, it'll, unless it's really monitored, it'll degrade really fast because there's so many people have so many different ideas just about the color to mention all of the color theories and um, uh, like scale effect and all that kind of stuff. And it, what really, I think what really got me thinking about it the most was when I read this right here. Tell me if this pops up. You see that? Uh, yeah, your Mustang, yeah. Bingo. Okay, so we got the Mustang. Now, the reason I is, is my mouse moving around? Can you see my cursor? I can, yes. Okay, perfect. So this particular aircraft and the group of aircraft with it, you're familiar with it because we talked about it when I was doing it. Yeah. There are two camps. There are there's the camp that says this part here, this part here, and this part here, and the wingtips were in a insignia blue kind of thing for whatever given reasons i mean there's all kinds of you know it's like they were right. painting over the invasion stripes they didn't have any of the green so they used some uh, and and from so this is a british roundel blue not u.s insignia blue this is a yeah. british roundel blue so that's whatever and people uh and then there's the other camp that say this no this is this was a darker green it was a different and then uh, the olive drab or whatever they had on the I, I don't remember all the details because right. I looked at so many things since then but that was part of the deal is no this was a dark green okay well what some people base the photos off of um, are there's some photos and then there's photos now obviously the color photos are period and they're old right so there can be color shifts and all that kind of stuff and that they're in, you know, some people that's blue, and then others saying, no, it's obviously green. <clears throat> and 
I base mine on the blue, and I've talked to you about this when I was doing it. Yeah. I base mine on the blue for two reasons. A guy that had went actually went to the National Archives or wherever it was and looked at the actual color slides. The 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 Dana Bell. Not Dana. not not huh? Yes. Yeah. Ex yeah, exactly. He didn't look at reproductions. He looked at the actual color slides. Yeah. Okay. And he determined that they were blue. And he also based that off of contemporary reports of some plane spotters that were there where the aircraft were. And right. they wrote down these planes that had these blue markings on them. Okay. At the time. <clears throat> Okay, so that's that's the evidence for blue. And then you have the evidence for the green. And supposedly there's some uh, person that was around the planes that was a crew a mechanic or something. And from what he remembers, no, they were green. They weren't blue, you know, but that's going off of memory. So, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's just, that's where things get jumbled up. Right. But, uh, oh. go ahead. I was going to say, if you, you know Stephen Bud. Uh uh. Okay, he's a he's a modeler out of the UK, a friend of mine, and and um, he's uh, he did he did the same markings in the blue off of Dana Bell's. You know, he conversed with right. Dana Bell and actually had discussions with him, and he also did you know the same version you did. Right. Um, and I was just going to say something quickly about eyewitness testimony <laughs> right um, you know it's it's the fact is is that those guys really weren't paying attention to to that kind of stuff they were you know it's it's not that <sighs> memories are memories from last week are bad memories from decades ago are are bad right um, you know, and, and you can't rely on that. That said, I will tell you, I have, Yeah. Um, for instance, I have uh, Russ Kyler's P47M in here, and there's discussion about whether those were black or whether they were a, a, a black blue, a flat black blue. Right. And Russ Kyler insists they were black. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to argue with the guy that was flying the plane. Right. I'm not. And see, well, is it possible he was wrong? Yeah. In this instance, I kind of went, it's black. How how wrong could you get that? Right. You know, so yep. well it, now see, and 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 that's that's part of my point. Okay. I went with the blue just because I like the uniqueness of it, because I tend to like unique aircraft. You know, I like I like uh either an aircraft with like a really unusual paint job or something that has a really cool backstory like the FW-190 I did that was metal, was metal finish with the stuff sprayed on it instead of it being solid colors. And the cool, the fact that it had the cool backstory of the guy, you know, stuffing his, his uh, fiance in the radio compartment to fly her to the, to the Western allies to surrender, right. you know, and they've gone back to location every year to toast their escape or whatever. That's the kind of stuff I like. And that's why I like the Lou Ford for two reasons. Number one, I mean, I, let me clarify. I don't like the fact that the guy was shot down and, and killed in a very short amount of time. Right, right, right. But he, he was, so the plane wasn't going to be real messed up as far as paint and dirt and oil and everything else. I wanted a little bit cleaner aircraft. Right. Well, a little bit cleaner reason and that was the reason and i like the color scheme now if it was green it wouldn't matter i i like the way those splotches were on it right but i went with the blue just because it was a little bit different and there is evidence right. to support it but like you said the 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 plane spotters that said oh it, it was blue well okay that's what they saw and i right like you said just like the the, the mechanic that said well, no, it was green. Either one of them could be totally wrong, you know? Right. So right. the point, the whole point of all that blabber, all that chatter I just did was this. Nobody knows. Nobody right. knows 100%. And right. to sit around and argue about it and start calling people names. Right. It's because so of it, that's the problem, <laughs> you know? Especially, yeah. especially when you base it off of 
Now, in this case, we have color photos, but it's really bad when you base stuff of base stuff off of black and white photos. You can't. You That's can't. The I thing, have a man. photography background, and and I love shooting black and white. And I will tell you, unless you know what the film was, what filters were used, and what it was developed in, and what in in, in what temperature, and and everything under the sun, there's no way to know. <laughs> yep. You know, I, I had a discussion with a guy one time and he was and it was something about a post, I think it was a post-war aircraft that had a national insignia without the red bar in it, without the post 40. It was it was a post 47 aircraft, but had but didn't have a post 47 insignia on it. Well, so I got involved and I'm like, okay, if the photo was taken with a red filter mm -hmm. if it's a black and white photo if they used a red filter to boost contrast which is very common very common in black and white photography guess what's going to get filtered out and will never right. be negative and he basically said i was full of so and so and didn't know what i was talking about i'm like okay <laughs> you know what are you going to do you know you're yeah. like oh, whatever you know i'm, I'm just trying yeah. to help or whatever you know well i was basically saying it's, a, it's probably a legit photo. The stripe's just gone because it got filtered out. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but instead there was this whole big discussion about, well, this, this plane didn't exist until, you know, after the war or so, or whatever it was, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm, you know, I, I'm kind of that way anymore. It's like, you know, so the minute somebody comes up and, you know, it's like the peacock and the feathers come out. And you're like, whatever, dude. Okay. You're, you're, it, it's it's a no-win situation because <laughs> you know, just like everything else nowadays, it's like I'm right, you're wrong. There's no meeting in the middle. I'm not going to see your point of view. Blah blah blah. But yeah. you know, the, the 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 memory thing that you were talking about, I I have a, a personal example. Um, I have uh, um, I raced BMX back in the '80s, and yeah. my grandfather bought me a frame uh in august of 81 bought it for my birthday visiting them in fresno and um it was the frame was red and it was kind of a it was kind of a candy red kind of thing and but i found out later from the actual manufacturer you know because i stayed in touch with them that they had a batch of like bad primer or something and because my bike, it wasn't long. I, 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 you know, cause you know, you bang your bike on stuff, you know, especially when you're racing, you're banging into other people. Well, the paint was coming off in huge flakes, huge chunks. I mean, I can stick my fingernail and just, and just pick the, the coat, the red coating off right. down to the gray That's primer. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Some kind of, vinyl. sorry. <laughs> But um, so I stripped it down and I repainted different colors through the years. Well, you know, uh, back in the early 2008, maybe 11, so maybe it was 2011, whatever. Uh, I, you know, started looking on stuff online and there's these groups that, you know, restore old bicycles and they're old, the old BMX groups and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, oh man, that's awesome. So, you know, you start talking to him and I thought, you know, I'd like to get mine back to original. So it's like, hey guys, what color was, you know, what was called, you know. Um, what was it, a Webco or something? No, no, it was uh, SC Racing, um, the maker of the PK Ripper. It was the quad angle. Okay. Uh, but it was this certain red color and I can't remember what the name of the color was, but it didn't have like a number or anything that I could, you know, go down to the paint shop and say, I need, you know, Pantone, blah, blah, blah. Right. And some guy, he posted a one and then I was able to actually see one, you know, because, you know, we know monitors are notoriously horrible for reproducing color, accurate color. Right. I actually saw one or one of that company's red items. And I'm like, man, I don't remember it being that color red. To me, it seemed like it had a little bit more of a purple hue to it, just a little bit right. more, more, more on the cool side, drifting to the cool side of red. Right. But the one I saw was more of, and I'm like, man, I don't remember being that color, but I'm looking at an original paint job, you know? Right. So the brain doesn't remember perfectly, right. you know? Right. right. And uh, so, you know, that goes back to the, 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 the people seeing that blue on that, on that Mustang. So that, that's all I'm going to say about that, but it's just, 
you know, you can't, you can't rely on fo- um, who is it? I follow a blog and he posts color photos. Like he just posted a batch of color photos of period of Corsairs. Colorized, put, colorized or color? Color, actual color photos. He, he, okay. he, 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 he stays away from the colorized stuff. Okay. Yeah. But not a single one of them was the same color blue. Not a single one of them. Right. Right, and because there's various reasons for that, yeah. The processing, the camera, like you say, the filters, the uh, oh, how old the photo just, is, the time of day, whatever, sheen, you know. The actual sheen of the paint. Yep, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. I, so. you know, there's, there's, there's that issue, and then there's the issue of the manufacturing, the, the model paint manufacturers all having different versions of the same thing. And some right. of them are not even close. Yeah. Um, you know, this is us. Uh, this is, this is what I've always called yellow zinc chrome. Um, the, the Vallejo modeler, they call it us interior yellow. Um, Tamiya calls it yellow green. What is it? XF four or whatever. Yeah. And, all about like this that the little tester square bottle has always been my favorite but i'm using this now and this is a little bit more green than the tester yeah. square bottle the tester square bottle is a little yellower um they're all pretty close so, right. so they all work for me um and but the point being is you can get the same the same FS number or ANA number or RLM number or whatever from different manufacturers. And sometimes they're not even in the ballpark. Right. You could get, and you probably know this, you could get a model master enamel color and a model master acrylic color. That's the same as FS number and they're not the same. Exactly. They look totally different. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, so so what do you do? Well, what you do is is you got to go to your to your references, right? And 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 sometimes that means going to the books and fi- figuring out how they made this rather than trying to match the actual color. Right. Like for me, I don't buy U.S. aircraft interior green anymore. I add black to this because that's how they did it. Yeah. So I take yellow zinc chrome it and I just add a couple of drops of black to it until I think it looks right and I'm good to go. Yeah. Um, you know, to me, mixing colors is a is is it's 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 really useful to know how to mix colors and know yep. you know, know what to do. And the t- and the two big things to know is don't use white to lighten things and don't use black to darken things. Yeah, no kidding. That does not work. <laughs> well, it's just like do just that. like anytime. I mean, this is pretty much common knowledge now, but anytime that people, you know, people say, well, you know, my, my olive drab, I want to lighten it up a little bit for some highlights, you know, for modulation or whatever, what should I use? You know, you don't use white because you end up with mud. They, you know, use like dark yellow or something like that. You know, like if you're using, uh, to me, I use XF60 to lighten it up, you know, but yeah, the, the whole, um, different manufacturers and stuff you know that's 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 a whole different thing and and i i found something here so let me give you uh let me um see if i can find this so anyway what was i going to say so kind of going off of that for me and probably for a lot of people you know like the kind of go the co- the go-to for us for a long time has been the ipms stockholm site at least for right. Craft, right yep. well i found another one <laughs> and it's it's and it's really good it's um let me see here it is gmodelart.com and i don't know what country this site's out of but they have they have content from different authors basically and they have um there's an author on there named uh let's see if i can find the guy's name and i'm and 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 maybe it's it may not even be a guy i don't know well let me see here it is i think it's giannis mitzis 
I've, yeah, I've, I've heard that name. Okay, so so he's got a a, a series called um, <sighs> Plain Colors and Camouflage, and he goes through all this all this stuff. He's, you know, U.S. Army World War II and U.S. Navy and Marine, and he's got all these different parts of the series, and um, they're really good and really really well um, really well researched. So what i wanted to do is read a little part of it just kind of just because to me if i and if i could find it here it just totally illustrated how ridiculous this is yeah um let's see here so he talks about so he's talking about zinc chromate you know into interior colors and it goes on and he talks about the yellow zinc chromate and he talks about the green zinc chromate and an interior green so i'm going to start where it's, where it's talking about green, green zinc chromate. So it says green zinc chromate. Most paint ranges will not differentiate it with the, with the slightly browner ANA 611 or give unspecific labels like US interior green. He's talking about modern model paint manufacturers. Right. Although for modeling, <laughs> difference should not be too problematic. Ammo by MIG, A MIG-202 commits the triple sin of labeling itself as Green zinc chromate, ANA 611, and FS 34151, which it appears closest to. Oh, wow. AK Real Colors, RC 264, is labeled interior green, is, is labeled interior green yellow, which suggests green zinc chromate rather than an ANA 611 match, AK's Air Series range, however, does include separate paints for each. That's one manufacturer. Yeah. <laughs> okay and then he goes on and he talks about <clears throat> some other you know other stuff and grum and gray primer and all this but i i just i remembered reading that and i was like wow you know he's talking about one manufacturer and there's like four or five different things that are all claiming to be the same thing and they're all made by the same company yeah <laughs> what <laughs> yep that's the thing <laughs> right you know yeah so what do you do what do you do? You know, you well, go back to your references and, and right. And yeah, you know, we've been lucky enough to have, um, at least for US aircraft, we've been lucky enough, probably in the past 10 years, to have some really um, well preserved samples recovered. Right. Dottie, Dottie May is a, is a great example. Um, you know, where, where there's actual real we have real information and 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 i think unfortunately a lot of the stuff that we thought was true that, that we were told was true before and i guess when i say we i'm talking about us like pre-21st century guy right exactly yeah um, you know all of that that previous research and stuff we're finding out now that a lot of that was maybe a lot of supposition and mumbo right. and you know the, the b-17s are, are a perfectly good thing you know oh, b-17s are interior green it's like mm, not necessarily it depends on what model it was and you know once they got to the g i think the late f's and the g's they didn't bother painting the inside right they left them they left them alone cranking them out you know the the, yep. the, the bulkheads were painted or the, and the right the ribs and stuff but the 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 covering, the skin. Yep. Ship it. <laughs> yep. You know. That's right. That's right. So. Well. Yeah. My point is, is the research has changed, and we've actually got better information now. Even though we're further away from the time frame, we've actually got better information. I think. Right. I yeah. Think no, I agree. And it's also uh, with the availability of internationally of getting a hold of stuff. You know, for example, um, I saw a, a really good um, video about um, Panzer Gray. Yes, I saw that. It's yes, great. and the it's guy, great. he had that box, and he's like, okay, yeah, fine. The outside could have faded from sun or fluorescent lights or whatever, which fluorescent lights really that. kills color. He flips that thing open. Here's Panzer Gray, at least. You know, from this time period, this is Panzer Gray, right. and 
and this is going to probably make some people angry, but it ain't blue. <laughs> Not even close. You know, <laughs> but, you know, he, and then uh, the other thing, uh, one of my favorite videos, I found it so interesting, was uh, um, Bobbington Tank Museum. Uh -huh. When they did that de the deal on how they came up with the Dunkelgelb for Tiger 131. Right. And all the research that went into it. And they had that, I think it was a Panzerfaust uh, storage box or something that they got. Same thing. It's a box. They flip it open. You've got pristine Dunkelgelb in there. Right. You know, so they were able to get a really good or as good of a match as they could possibly get now, you know. Right. And that's so that's what they determined they were going to paint right tiger 131 with right you know so you know you've got these you've got these um really good and really accurate uh examples of the color without having to rely on a color chip in a book or whatever you know right, right. and so they you know so they i mean because if you paint something on paper it's going to look different than something you paint on metal you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, way different that's why you know it's like sometimes when you see people you know testing it's like oh yeah these these colors are like really super accurate and they'll spray it on a piece of paper right you know well you know yeah it's a good looking color i'm not going to deny that but it's going to look a little bit different than if you spray it on plastic and then you get into you know right. it's going to look different if you're spraying it on you know red brown primer or gray primer or black primer or you know whatever it's right. going to change the color of it but these the, you know finding these actual items that you know haven't had any exterior you know weathering impact you know Tough. didn't have that a long time ago or if people did it was like you know not very many people knew about it well or they didn't have, you know you, you had stuff like that and you didn't really advertise it you know. Well, right. You know, and, and who, who, how, how are you going to get the word out anyway? You know, we right. didn't have the internet back then. Right. You know, right. You might read a cool article. Oh, yeah, I found a box, blah, blah, blah. And the, the closest, you know, color, you know, model color that, you know, matches this particular color panzer gray on this item is such and such, you know. Right. And back then, it's, you know, whatever paint they thought was more accurate, it's probably been out of business for 20 years. So it doesn't matter right. anyway. Right. <laughs> You know, and even up until, I don't know, I want to say even up until the 70s, nobody really was thinking about preserving this stuff. Nope. You know, and... and, and well, look, look what they did with all the stuff they have at, had at Aberdeen Proving Ground. Right. Take it out in the field. Let's put some wacky color. I mean, some of the camouflage colors. And the funny thing is, is, you know, when I was younger, people used to look at those, oh, yeah, that's a cool paint scheme, you know? Well, come to find out, well, yeah, you know, the volunteer they had working that day, that's the only buckets of paint they could find. Oh, so I'll God. paint it this color here, you know. They were never tiger striped or whatever. And it's like right. you know, and but you know, that's the color people thought they were, you know. Right, right. Yeah, I, I you know, and again, you know, you they're probably working off of memory too. Yeah. You, know, you just you just don't know. And 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 the problem we have with the era that we like to to deal with which is world war ii you know is even the color place like we've talked about are you know that stuff is typically horrendously blue shifted mm -hmm. um, just because of the emulsion so yeah you know you can deal with that i mean you can scan it and and pull some of the blue out of it or whatnot but it's all an educated guess right and and, and um uh, you know and then if we want to throw something else into the pot we can talk about scale effect <laughs> you know <clears throat> that's funny because every <laughs> every I, I see it so much it's like even in the real world okay when i worked at a building material store and people would come in and say i want i want a really pale yellow I'm not going to say my mom's name or anything. I want a really pale yellow for the bathroom, really pale yellow. It's like, okay, which one do you want? You know, take home some color chips. Here you go, mom. Which one do you like? Okay. I like this one right here. It's like, okay, so we need to do this one here, two shades lighter off of this chip. 
well, no, I don't like that color. It's too light. I wanted this color. Okay, mom, when you get this on the wall, it's going to look a lot different. Yeah. She wasn't having it. It's like, all right. Yeah. Start painting the wall. Get one wall done. She's like, oh, that's really bright. Exactly. <laughs> so we go get the color that we were recommended to begin with. And boom, that's the color she wanted because, you know, a, a, a color chip, you know, is going to look a lot different. I mean, like I said, I was telling you earlier before the video, you know, we're redoing our, our church building. They're trying to pick colors. She's, you know, she picked a color that matched two different things. Okay. She puts it on the wall. It's like, okay, that looks cool. But when you put the thing up next to it, okay, it doesn't look the same. But it looked exact on, on with the, when you put the color chip on there. Well, right, that color chip is really small. Yeah, it looks good on there. But when you put it the, that thing next to the actual big painted part of the wall that you're testing here, right. looks totally different, you know. And it's funny, it's funny you talk about the lighter and the darker thing because typically, when I'm painting a, a room or whatever, I buy two different I buy two different shades of trim color and I start with the darker one. And I usually yeah. end up going to the light one. Yep. Just be just from experience. Right. You know, and I don't know what it is in my head that causes me to do that, but I always get, you know, I get this one. This is what I want. I'm gonna get one a little bit lighter. I'm gonna put this one on first anyway. Yeah. But I almost always end up repainting the trim again with the yep. light. It just it looks so much different. And then that, you know, it's like there's a lot of people that talk about the whole scale effect thing. And, you know, honestly, I haven't really ever looked into scale effect very much because, you know, I mean, I'm the type I just I've got colors that I like for certain things and that's what I'll use. Yeah. Um, but just like, um, well, olive drab, you know, if you use olive drab right out of the bottle, like to me, for instance, I was gonna say, um, which, which you know, <laughs> huh? What era? <laughs> yeah. Um, World War II uh, vehicle. Well, it's funny because I, I even asked Steve Zaloga this once. I, I said, hey, I, you know, I was asking about a, um, some color chart, some uh, color things he did on, on a tank and uh, on a Sherman. And he was like, yeah, you know, this is, this, this is the color I did at the time whenever I did this book years and years ago. But since then, after more research, it should be this, blah, blah, blah. But for a long time, and he, he, he said, he said the best olive drab was uh, Tamiya. But at some point in the last 10 or 15 years or whatever, they changed the formula of it, and it doesn't look the same as the older oh. um, Tamiya olive drab. And there's a, there's a number of people that have, that have mentioned that. But, you know, Steve Zaloga, I mean, he's dug deep into all this stuff, and it's like, yeah. well, that's interesting. And, he you know, he said... You know, he goes, now, obviously, you know, I think it was him that said this, but, you know, right out of the bottle, especially on, you know, it's kind of dark, yeah. but it's a perfect base it's by really sticking that XF60 in it to lighten it up to get it to a good scale right. representation, which I guess would be the scale effect thing. It's really, well, you know, I think it was him that did that whole article on olive drab and i've got it somewhere and it's yeah and i think i think the gist of it if i remember is out of the bottle it's pretty good for modern for vietnam era cold war right era. olive drab but you need that yeah you have to lighten it up but that's like right or whatever for for world war ii and, and obviously armor olive drab is different than aircraft olive drab and yeah because isn't the aircraft olive drab a little browner looking yeah, it's different, and it's a little, little bit browner. Yeah, yeah, and and it's it's. I don't think it's as durable, by you know I. Well, right. I don't know. You know, I don't. I don't. I don't. I. I don't have it off the top of my head right now, but. But um. You know, and and all of this stuff really kind of comes back to find what works for you and what you like, and just. And just do it. Yeah. Well, uh, see, and that's that's the thing is, you know, I'm I'm of the I'm of the mind. Um, to me, first of all, 
it's pointless. Uh, to me, it's just so such a waste of energy to argue vehemently about the colors when you're talking about a group of colors that are so close, you know, it's like, if you like that shade of olive drab, use it, you know? Yeah. Cause by, and, and, and the thing, and the thing of it is too, the other thing that cracks me up, especially with modelers and armor modelers, they will fight tooth and nail about what color they're using you know, it's like, that's the wrong color olive drab. That's the wrong color ducal gel. That's the wrong color, you know, rot brown or whatever. You know, that's the wrong color. You know, this is the color I use. So they'll use that color, but then they'll put filters on it, which shifts the color. Right. And then they'll put dust and dirt and everything else. Then so, chip it off. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and that's the thing. And it's like, it, it's like, well, are you just arguing to argue for argument's sake? Or is it, you know, because when it's all said and done, it's like, it's not the color you put on there to begin with because right. of all the other stuff. And, you right. know, granted, granted, you know, somebody that really knows, you know, color stuff, um, you know, if they were to do two, say two, two tiger tanks in, in uh, you know, Dunkel Geld, and they used one brand of paint here and one brand of paint here. And then they put their same filter, same, you know, um, um, opaqueness of the filter and then the same weathering and all that kind of stuff. If you could replicate it exactly, you know, all the stuff afterwards, yeah. then maybe you'd see a little bit of a difference. But by that point, does it really matter? You know, yeah. I, I don't know. It's just well, the, the part that's frustrating is like you can, you can have your preference in color you know, and like it, but the ex it's an exercise in futility to argue about it. I, I think that's what my whole color accuracy thing boils down to the whole, you know, why I, it just blows me away because anytime I'll see what color should I use for, you know, this, you know, Panzer uh, 38T. Oh man. You'll get somebody, yeah, exactly. You'll get somebody on there. Oh, this is this is what I use, you know, or this is what I use, or this is what I use, and this is what I use. Well, that's wrong. Well, yeah, you shouldn't use that because they, you know, blah blah. And then it just like so. At the end of the thing, <laughs> the original poster is probably thinking, okay, what? So yeah, just well, take yeah. one and go, that's, you know. Yeah, and that's <clears throat> and that's where it. I don't want to say it becomes a problem, but becomes an issue. You know, the, the thing is, and I'm not saying they're not worthwhile discussions because I think they are. And I, and I think, you know, like we've been talking about with, with all the new findings and stuff that we've had in the last decade or two and, and, and whatnot, you know, these are, these are things that at least geeks like me, I want to know. Right. You know, it's like Dottie May, you know, when they pulled Dottie May out and they started stripping the cockpit and they started stripping the the dark dull green off of it and they found zinc chroma yellow under the dirt it's like wow now most people are like who the hell cares well right i do i guess sorry but see that <laughs> you know. and therein lies the difference though you know <laughs> there's discussion there's discussion about it right and then there's you know now i've been on some forums that it, it, they're just phenomenal it's like they'll say well you know it's like you know this is the color i chose and this is the reason i chose it you know what do you guys think blah 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 it's like well you know that particular uh research item has kind of been superseded by this one this is it you know here's a link to it read up on it see what you think right oh hey i didn't know that that's awesome that's new stuff it's just like when me and you were talking about the blue on the mustang yes. you know these are the reasons I'm doing it. And you're like, well, this, you know, and you've got your photography background and you're talking about this, that, and the other. And it's like, you just have a discussion about it. You know, in the end, when I did the blue, I'm not saying it's right by any means. It's just, you know, there's a little, there's enough evidence to support me going ahead and doing blue just because it's a different color than, than green on, on a, you know, on that part of a, a of an aircraft. Right. But there's a difference between discussion and just arguing, you know, it's like people's like, or, and, and, and then people getting all personal, you know, right, it's like, right. well, you're a meathead. Yeah. Well, you're a jerk. You know, it's like, okay, what happened? 
does this really affect you? Not really. Um, yeah, no, I, I uh, what I was going to say though, is, you know, stuff like this can, I think can be a real turnoff for some people. And, and it's not, and I, I guess what I would, excuse me, what I would say <laughs> to those people that kind of see that stuff as a turnoff is, is I, I get it, but I would also say, you know, recognize that it has value. The discussions have value. They, yep. get, they get out of hand um, because people are people and, and I could go into the psychology of it, but I won't. <laughs> but, yeah. but um, That's a rabbit hole. Let's, let's just say that everybody likes to believe that they know things. Yeah. And, and, and we get value from that. And that's okay, you know, that's what makes us human. Um, and, but the discussions themselves are, are useful, you know, and, and what am I trying to say? There's a difference between an opinion and a fact. And you will, you'll, a lot of times you'll hear me say, this is my opinion because I want to make it clear, my opinion, and it's probably based in some fact, but not enough for me to say, yeah, I know this is true. Right. Yep. You know, but but I've, I've got enough evidence, at least on my own head, that I'm comfortable saying, in my opinion, yeah, I think this is pretty, pretty good. This is pretty accurate. Right. Well, yeah. hence my disclaimer at the beginning, you know, it's like, I, there's people that have spent their lives, you know, researching this stuff you know like steven zaloga i mean that's he, that's what he does you know but yeah i hear you it's like you know most of what i you know and and the thing is like is if people can just go into it knowing you know these people that uh might be jumping on a form to you know find this is my first this is my first armor model i, I, I want to do you know i want to do a good job on it. i want to get as close as i can what right. color you know all you can do is just read through it all and pick out the stuff that you, you know, that maybe you can research on your own. Like, like when people add links to stuff, it's, it's awesome. It's like, well, here, here's a link to an article. Just like, that's how I found out about, you know, that's how I, one of the conclusions I uh, came to with the, the Lou four Mustang is right. somebody had a link to uh, what was his name? Dana, Dana Bell, Dana Bell, Dana Bell. And I thought, okay, so I went and I read that. It's like, that's really good, you know. Yeah. But then I also read some stuff where people were saying, well, no, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, I looked at two, I weigh them. It's like, they're both very, very valid and have a lot of, you know, credence. Right. But, you know, I like the unusual. So I'm going to, I'm going to err on the side of something unusual. Because I've seen the same exact Ravel aircraft. I mean, sitting on a bench look just like mine except they went with the green right and you know what it looks it looks awesome it looks really right. cool because right. the pattern of it and everything right. else you know it's just, i went with blue now you do get like that one that's in i can't remember what i think it's in texas they did a real p51 as Lou flip four oh, and yeah. they use this like weird medium like blue or something yeah oh my it's like oh that's you know that's definitely not that's right. way off <laughs> there ain't no way that was the color you know yeah, that didn't happen <laughs> well you but, know um yeah. another another good example is how many years how many decades did people um paint m3 stewart honey the contour scheme in blue yeah that light blue yeah. You know, that's what they did for a long time. And, and it came from one mistake in one museum or one display or something like that. And people ran with it, yeah. you know, and after a lot of research and people finally getting access, you know, to, to records and all this kind of stuff. It's like, man, that blue, it looked cool. Well, it was a neat looking color, but yeah. it was, it's pretty well been proven. It's pretty well, um, agreed upon by everybody that it, it wasn't a light blue color it was that more whatever well you the call assumption it. is and, and 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 you gotta understand why it would you know people would think this is true is the assumption is is well why would the museum curator 
do it incorrectly. Right. They're they're a, they're a curator. They should that you know this is what they do for a living. Yep. So it must be right. I mean that's yep. the that's the logic that's the logic chain. You know it's it's so why would you question it? This guy knows what he's doing. Right. Well, that, that I just just the other day, and this doesn't have to do with paint, but it has to do. It's the same thing, you know. Uh, is uh, somebody was talking about um, some aircraft, and somebody's like, "Well, yeah, but that's you know that aircraft's totally wrong." It's like, "Well, yeah, that's because when Tamiya was designing that model back in the old days, before they had laser scanners and all this kind of stuff, they went to a museum." And said, "Oh, this is a whatever it was." You oh, know. that's the F four with the patch panels, or the F sixteen with the patch panels, or whatever. I know what you're it could be. Yeah. You know, it, and it's happened lots of times. It's like they'll go, "This is it," and they'll do all their measurements, they'll do all their photos, they'll do all their details, they'll put this stuff on it. It's like, "Oh, well, that that was you know a patch they put on it, you know, in in the in the shed, you right. know, when they were before they got it out on the ground." Right. So that's not really a thing. But that's all they had to go on at the right. time, right. just like the just like the contour the contour scheme blue. That's all they had at the time. That's what they thought it was. And you know, you ask vets, that and most there, of those, somebody yeah, there probably told them it was. Blue. Well, yeah, it's like, oh yeah, that that looks about right. But it's it's just like you know, I, I like it how you know whenever people will ask, you know, it's like, you know, hey Uncle Joe, you know, uh, what what color was that tank? The tank? What color green was that tank? I have no idea. Don't know. Don't care. I was too busy trying to stay alive and keep my weapons clean. I'm just I'm worried about the important it. stuff. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I just want to come home. Yeah. That's that's all I'm worried about. Yeah. You know. I. I. I, I don't worry too. You know. I get close, and I don't worry too much. I. I it's really interesting to me, like the. Um, the Japanese gray green, like the early war zero, yes, yes, gray green, and how that whole color, how that whole discussion has shifted over the years and whatnot. And, um, you know, I have I have all those paint mixes saved, and you know, like the the ones that oh, <laughs> <laughs> the ones that the the Oh, one guy did with the Tamiya colors. You know, I mean, you you got to have like six or seven different colors, you know, to mix together to get this to get this color. And and have oh, I done man. that? No, I just used the Japanese navy gray or whatever, the IJN gray. But the point well, is, yeah, go on. It's interesting. It's fat. You know, to me, that stuff that and those. I mean, more power to those guys, really. Yeah. Like, all that trouble and actually get sample actual real life stuff and then sit down and try and match this stuff i i think that's great yeah um am i going to go to that much trouble on a on a six dollar kit i got out of swap meet probably not <laughs> you know am i getting yeah. much trouble on a on a on a hundred dollar to me a f4b probably not yeah <laughs> well, see, just you, you mentioned that the, the Japanese aircraft, um, whenever I got a, uh, well, it was actually the first 172nd scale kit I built that I can remember. I mean, I'm sure I built them when I was a little kid, but once I got to adulthood, it was 148th or larger, and uh, somebody sent me um, the Tamiya Zero, 172nd scale Zero, which was a phenomenal kit. And I love that kit. Ben Brandis, if you're watching, thanks again for that kit. Um, but I thought, you know, I'm going to look into the colors. Oh, man. I mean, I, out, of, out of all the colors, I think Japanese aircraft colors are the ones that are just a minefield, man, because you had, you know, uh, Mitsubishi was doing it. Um, um, Nakajima, whatever, you know, it's some of them, you know, it's like you could have two zeros. One of them would have that Altaki blue yeah. metallic looking like protective lacquer or whatever it was in some parts, but not in other parts. And then the other one would have it in it. And it's like, oh my goodness. And then that, that, that one color you're talking about, that weird kind of, it's almost like an off white kind of 
and it's yeah, I looked. Green at, and it's actually pretty green, really. Right, right. It's yeah. a very greenish tinted off white. And I, I, was, I was, I was reading. I found a couple of really good websites, and I'm just, I'm reading and reading and reading. And it's like, oh, my head's gonna pop, right? You know. <laughs> and and I, I got as close as I could. And at that point, I was like, you know what? With the exception of glaring errors, I'm, I'm gonna go with what the the manufacturer recommends you know yeah. and which sometimes is not right but you know it's like sometimes it's like i mean i like to research the colors and stuff you know and it can it you know like you it, it's it's kind of fun to just like start yeah but after a while after it's like okay i gotta stop because right. i'm just i'm overwhelming right. myself man you're gonna get anything done yeah the hard drive's getting overloaded i need to do a defrag here so let's right. you know Put that one on the back burner for a few days and you know it was like you, you talk about your your must the you know Lou the fourth and, and going with the blue and i mean i was kind of like me with the with the p38 and going with the with the raf dark green you know and the and the, the logic behind that being that that lockheed was building the hudson for the raf and they didn't have all the drab and you know they had raf dark green is what they had in stock so that's what they they use you know and they had the raf yeah colors and so that's what i did and and because it made sense to me you know it's like yeah that makes total sense yeah you know and 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 um is it right i don't know i really yeah. don't i i yeah. mean i can i can i was able to justify it to myself in my head yeah you know and 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 somebody will come along i'm sure and look at it and say that ain't right and i'll be like okay thanks i don't know i honestly don't know yep. <laughs> you know but but it made sense to me it made sense yeah. At the time. yeah yeah i mean sometimes you just gotta just go with your just go with your gut but uh, i just uh, a couple days ago i was reading on a um, an armor forum and somebody said hey uh you know, M4 A3 Sherman. You know, in British service, what what color did the British paint it? Somebody responded, they didn't. What, what do you mean? <laughs> it was shipped to them pre-painted. You yeah. know, they put their markings on them, but it was already painted. They just didn't repaint the whole flipping thing. Right. You know, now right. if it got you know burned up or shot up or something, went back to the depot, they might you know repaint it in a different color. But you know, it's just it's that. You know, it's funny, it's just talking about it, you know, it, it really is a super interesting, I mean, you can make a hobby out of just paint yeah, for yeah. models, you know, but, um, you know, it just all boils back down to the thing. It's like, you just, like you said, you just got to go with, you know, is it right? Is it wrong? I don't know, but this is the this closest I can come up with. So this color I'm going to use, you know, just like that, uh, you'd ask me what, what kit was I painting? I'd painted the interior. And he said, what color did you use on that? And I said, whatever color it was. And he said, oh, it just looks kind of, uh, it doesn't look quite gray, as gray as it should or something like that. You know, it was an interior uh, cockpit color. And I, but I can't remember which kit it was. I'm um, trying to remember what the last. Probably like an RLMO2 or something. <sighs> it might have been. that color's all over the place. That color. Yeah. Is, you see gray and you see green and. And, and, you know, and for me, RLMO2 and British cockpit green are the same color. Yep. They're close enough in, in my vision that uh, to me, it's, it's the same color. I'm sorry. It's yeah. Color. Well, you know, it's funny because a lot of people will, um, where is it? Oh, I can't find it. But uh, a lot of people will use, which one is that? Oh, crikey. I can't remember what, oh, here it is. A lot of people, regardless of what country it is, uh, if it calls for the interior gray-green color, good old XF-71. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, you look at the lid, it's like, well, that's, that's not right. But you look at the color, it's like, oh, okay, that's cool. So but again... Again, it's one of those things, you know, it's like, well, I painted this thing, this, you know, color, and then start slapping, you know, black washes all in it and chipping it all off and everything else. So again, you know, 
the original color you modified it so you could have probably used any gray green interior color and come up with a really good result you That's know what I used on the p38 you know with the idea again that it was rf colors yep you know sue me yeah yeah <laughs> go right. ahead and sue me go I, ahead and sue me i don't care um oh what was i gonna say there was something else i wanted to oh i was gonna ask you um you know talking about the different shades or whatever want to you know, to me has come out with these new versions of previous colors. Um, German, Dunkel, British, yeah, right? the Dunkel Gelb, uh, the uh, red, red brown, red. and the camo green. Right. Uh, what is it? 88, 89, and 90, I think. Yeah. And then they did. XF 88, the 89, and 90. Yeah. They've redone the RAF daylight colors too, right? The I think so. Yeah. I, I haven't gotten any of those, but I have heard, I have heard that. So what's up with that? I mean, I know I never really heard, but apparently somebody went, oh wait. And they still make both versions, right? You can still right. buy both. Yeah. Buy both. Yeah. It, you can like buy the, the um, I can't remember if it's the 88 or the 90 or whatever, but is uh I think I have. it's like dark yellow two. You know, you've got XS60, yes. which is dark okay. yellow, then you've got dark yellow two, which is the other one. Yeah. I think I have them. Um, up here somewhere anyway but you know it's it's like they're they're coming up with um new formulations now that there's new information available right yeah here we go ah, dark yellow okay dark yellow right and dark yellow too yep now i can tell you Sitting right here with these in front of me. Um, let me where's the camera at? You're there. It's just a little bit, looks like maybe more yellow. This one's, no, this one is a little bit more yellow than this one. Right. Maybe. I mean, they're yeah. so close. They're really close. But when you get, when you get them down on a model, you can't tell a difference. And here's the thing. Now I didn't have any of the new one, the dark yellow two, uh -huh. and I do like that one better because it's a little bit lighter. Yeah. Than 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 the uh, XF sixty, and a perfect example of that is the tiger that I just finished. Um, once I got that done, this is the dark yellow two. Right. Yeah. See that I like that one a lot better because it's paler. That's why, and it's funny because, and that's why I'm you know in my quest to save my lungs and the lungs of my family yeah. i'm going to water water-based acrylics uh i really like mission models version of uh dark yellow dunkel gelb uh -huh. it's a little bit paler kind of like that the new tamiya one but in putting regular xf60 on that on that tiger tank i just did when I got it done, I was like, I mean, and this is this is the first time I painted a um, Panzer or a, 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 a German vehicle in Ducal Gelb in a long time. And the last few that I've done, right, have, were were in that lighter color. But the, the places I got them because of the you know the plague and everything, I wasn't able to get any more of it. I just right. used the XF60 I had, and it's just and looking at it now, it's just it's dark. It looks dark to me, and that's the color that I used for years, and everybody else used for years. Yeah, I mean, here's this is the this is the original colors. Yeah, because this my son built this long before the new colors were out. It's really dusty, right? But you know, I mean, it looks fine. Yeah, got cobwebs all over it, but. Um, <laughs> you know I, I i don't know you know i remember i seem to remember and this is again we're going back to memory but the old uh, verlinden way books and stuff and the tamia catalogs the colors that they used it seemed to me were much more yellow yeah than even this 
you know they they, yeah. they were much more yellow right um well it's like when vallejo came out with their uh their primer uh colors that were you know they had like an olive drab primer they had a dunko gel primer and i used i thought hey that's kind of cool i can use the dunko gel primer as my base coat and yeah. then I'll paint the the camo colors on top of that. Man, it was way too green. It had a serious green cast to it. So I was like, oh man. So I ended up having to, you know, paint it anyway, which is no big deal. But I thought, hey, I could save myself a step and save myself a layer of paint, you know, and use this primer. And it's like, man, nah, didn't work. It's kind of funny. I was just thinking to myself, it's kind of funny listening to us talk about how this color doesn't seem yellow enough or whatever or too green like we were there yeah exactly yep <laughs> right? exactly but exactly see and what it, we're talking about exactly but that's <laughs> the, and that's the thing you know and that's what it that's all this that i've been saying and all the examples of you know putting all the goop on top of the color you did it's going to change it just just find one that you like find yeah. one that you can spray or brush paint or whatever you do and, and use it you right. know you're always going to have somebody that's going to say well that's not right you know well sorry you know i know like you said sue me you know if you want <laughs> of course i live in california i might not want to say that because it's the united you, know, States. you can sue anybody for anything they, they might win or, <laughs> or at least want to settle out of court have your lawyer tell you you better settle out of court bro this is going to go to trial what one you know what you get a free frosty at wendy's that's what you get. yeah but you know it's like so my my whole premise to this whole you know topic is is color accuracy is like a it's just it's an exercise in futility to argue about it online you know yes. or in person or whatever discussion yes argument you're beating your head against the wall you know people right, have right. their opinions right. some people have their opinions and they're not going to be flexible at all right um and then uh just find a paint that works well for you and the color that you like and and use that and make it work you know and maybe mess around with you know lightening it because whenever i do whenever i do a like an olive drab vehicle, like a Sherman or something, I'll spray it straight underneath the sponsons and on the, on the, on the engine, uh, the, the rear access uh, on the back of the, uh, the hole. Yeah. Okay. As I move up, I'll lighten it a little bit. And it's just, right. just because it's such a dark color. I mean, I like it dark underneath because, you know, it's, it's in shadow, you know, but as I go up, you know, I'll, I'll mix in some yellow with it to spray the upper parts and then maybe a little bit you know and it's funny because you got people like i've, I've been watching uh mike rinaldi's doing some youtube videos on oil paint rendering and stuff like that yeah and i have his books and he talks about never one time does he talk really about the accuracy of colors no he says this is the color i use for this sherman and this is what i did to you know weather it or do whatever i'm doing with it he doesn't say, you know, I use this because it's the most accurate color. And there's not a whole lot of people who are going to gripe too much about the the models he puts out. You know, they oh, look and, great. And, but and it's I, it's a it's a perfect example of it doesn't really matter what color you're putting down as base. Now, if you're if you're going for a showroom thing, you know, well then it might be a different different story. But you know most uh, there's not too many armor modelers i know that build them fresh out of the factory they do weathering of some kind or another yeah well i think you know i mean me mainly being an aircraft modeler is is i try to vary to put even a slight variation so that everything in the cabinet doesn't look the same that's I another mean, that's thing basic, you know i mean i do various nations but if you're doing if you're a guy you know there, there's a lot of people at least in the u.s that stick to building u.s aircraft and if you're doing u.s world war ii aircraft your choices of colors are very limited mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yeah you've got natural metal finish and you've got all the drab over neutral gray and there's some there's some sand you know in there and there's a couple of variations but for the most part 
your display case is going to be pretty bland. Right. Just saying. Well, yeah. it's just like, you know, you get, a, you get somebody that, you know, is building like, you know, uh, I like building, you know, P51s or whatever. And you build P51 one after another after another. And if you don't, you know, mix things up, it's like, oh, that's really cool. Oh, that one's really cool. Yeah, that one's pretty cool. And then it's like, okay, they're all starting to look the same. You know, they might have a different nose on it. They might have a different whatever, but, you know. Well, yeah, people that build, you know, a bunch of P47s. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, don't, I get it i mean i look at them and to me they're all different and but i know they're not you know, right to me they are right like, oh well, that's a p47 d27 you know and this is a p47 d40 so what's the difference well the landing lights in a different place and the floorboard's different and the dashboard a little different Who see can? that can yeah that can go back to um <laughs> who's your who's your audience you know yeah, right. You right, know, right, right, right. Yeah. A perfect a good example is John Bias. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Spitfire. Yeah. Well, there's only so many color schemes on a Spitfire. Yeah. You know, but like you know 90 of them or something. Something like that. But you look at them and if you know anything about Spitfires, okay, this is different, this is different, this is different, this is different. Yeah, sure, the base colors may be the same, but it's a different version, it's got different markings, you know. To somebody in the know, but to just to the average Joe, if they see a whole line of you know whatever, it's like okay, that's you know it's cool the first two or three kits, but now they all they all look the same. So I'm done. Right. You know. Right. I mean, the, the good thing with P47s, well, even P51s, I guess, if, if you like P51s, is that you know the 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 nose art and the squadron markings and stuff. Yeah. Getting, you know, especially with P47s, we're getting very colorful and and unique and stuff and and um. But you know, and that's really where the the differences come in. I I don't know, you know, I really can't tell you why I'm so stuck. I for me, the one thing I've always said for me with with the P47, this to me is an American muscle car. Mm -hmm. It's a big giant thing with a whole lot of horsepower to get it moving and moving fast yep you know where is is um where's the mustang and this is going to sound funny because it's kind of true is is like a little british sports car sports like car or something. you know so you have this is like a uh 66 gto with a three dice you know yeah try power in it versus you know it, uh, an xke you know a jag XK right or something it's yeah anyway that's you know and, and and i i guess this thing just intrigues me because it's so big yeah it's such oh, a yeah. piece of machinery big and old fat so blubbery looking thing so yep fat. And and you know once once they got into the, the the later models and got the the paddle bladed props and stuff on them, there was almost nothing that could touch it. Yeah, you know people think you know, oh, you know the Mustang was fast. You know this was faster, <laughs> and it could take more punishment too. No, it wasn't. Well, okay, I'm not going to argue with you about it. You know, yeah, but. Anyway, that's a talk about getting off on a tangent. Um, yeah, no kidding. But, but yeah, yeah. you know, and, and it, to, it's you know, it's they always make the comparison between this and the A10, and it's kind of true. Yeah. Except this was even more versatile than the A10. You know, it could do the ground attack and the. Yep. And the and the whatever, but anyway, the. The whole paint thing, yeah. Have we killed that bird? I think we killed think, that bird. We kicked. I think it we it. done killed it. Yep. Yeah, I was just gonna say, just my whole my whole thing, and I'll reiterate it is, you know, paint accuracy is a is a minefield. You know, you, there's to me there are no definites. You know, I mean, you can get you can get really super close like that like that uh, Panzer Gray uh, that I was talking about earlier example and the and the Dunkelgeld that uh, Bobbington had 
you know, there's some pretty, you know, this is pretty definite. This is what this color was, at least when this box was painted, you know. But again, you know, when you're you're looking at a black and white photograph and you're saying, oh, well, that, it's obvious what that is. Okay, what's obvious about it? You know, there's nothing obvious about it. You know, you can go off of what they said they put on it and, you know, yeah, you know, and don't take into a don't take into effect or don't take into account, you know, how many layers of dust and dirt and filth and how long the sun's been beating down on it, you know. <clears throat> Yeah, like, you know, lighting, intensity of light, angle of light, um, um, just there's a zillion things that are, that affect a photograph, and, yeah. and it's it's distance of the object from the camera. Uh, you know, that's where the whole scale effect thing comes in because you have one thing that's close, and you have one thing that's far right. away and the color shift <laughs> from that and it's 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 an hybrid you know this that's that's precisely why you the that um color accuracy is not an issue with like an ipms contest now if yeah. you come in there with with something that's painted purple you know a purple sherman or something yeah that's a problem right. well yeah there's, there's <laughs> obvious you know there's obvious uh there's boundaries. Faux pas, you know. Yeah, like, there's, you, you don't, you there don't are boundaries. And, yeah. Yeah. But no, but nobody's going to come in and say, well, that interior green is just a little bit too green, Jan. That's that's not gonna happen. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, more, it's more it's more on how it was applied to your model. Right, yeah. And make sure so there you go chunky looking and everything so yep you know what i just had a scary thought uh oh this is how my brain works not that you want to know no nah, not really it doesn't work i just kind of looked at this and went oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's not as close as it looked when they weren't next to each other yeah <laughs> but see there you go again <laughs> colors can be deceiving <laughs> well, you know, I, I I came to the conclusion years ago that that the modern U.S. Air Force grays, you know, um, and by modern I mean seventies, eighties, Cold War era right. um, stuff um, were the same grays as the Luftwaffe was using at the end of World War II. I yeah. mean, I came to that conclusion years and years ago. Yeah. You know, and I've been doing that for forever. Do yeah. a late war, a late war 109 or something. I'm grabbing my Air Force colors, my modern Air Force colors. They're, it, to, to my eye, they're the same. Yeah. And that's all you can rely on. Right. Is your own eyeballs because, man, everybody else is going to see something completely different. Right. 10 by 10, 10 people are going to see 10 different colors. <laughs> right. Right. All right, my friend. There you go. Well, that's that. Another chatterbox on the in the books. No, Wait, on the books on the internet. What? On the hard drive. On the hard drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the color. Color is one of those things you could probably talk for episode after episode. It's just one of those things. Yeah. Pick the color you like and make it work. Yeah, as long as you're in the ballpark, you're good. Unless you just don't care. Yeah, and that's exactly. fine too. Yep. You know, that, uh, not to get started again, but that's yeah, every once in a while I'll build a car. And and that's a big part of it for me when I build a car. It's, it's a car. I can paint whatever color I want. Earl Scheib, he'll do it for you. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I can paint it any color I want. Yep. It doesn't matter. So there you go. Yep. There you have it. Well, that was a that was a good uh, good convo. So that was yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to think. What, what did we talk about? <laughs> a lot of stuff. <laughs> this that <laughs> that over there. Anyway, well, yep. you know, I, I hope this was entertaining at least. Um, you know, nobody's throwing knives at their TV or at their monitor. 
So I can click. How many people? Yeah, put a nine, put a nine mil through their through their computer through, the, monitor, through their it. monitor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, we just do this for entertainment value. So all you viewers out there, watch it. Um, yeah, all you viewers. You know, if you feel like putting something in the comments section down yeah. below, do it. Yeah. You know, and uh, and let us know. You know, let us know what your thoughts are on color stuff on models. Are you like? super accurate are you kind of like in the ballpark do you not care at all and you, you just want to paint your thing yeah do yeah put paint? some comments down there that'd be great do you paint you know yeah i, I mean do didn't you... have to back in the day it said right on the monogram box molded in color molded in color it did bingo matchbox came in what three colors and aurora always came in interesting colors yep monogram came I had, like you got I... a german vehicle it was molded in dark yellow if you got an american vehicle it was molded in uh olive drabish color there you go what do you need and then yeah yeah so hey anyway. one one really quick funny story i i remember i went into bnf <laughs> hobbies here in town and i just got a p40 and it was molded in uh, kind of a it was supposed to be a desert version or something so it was kind of this yellowish color so i cut off a piece of that sprue I thought, man, I'm going to do this one. Up. I'm actually going to do some paint on this one. So I went in there and I held up the sprue. I said, I need some, some of that Model Master enamel paint in this color right here. Well, what are you doing with it? Well, I'm going to paint the, I'm going to paint the framework on the canopy. All right. I was matching. I wasn't going to paint the plane. I just wanted a color I could paint this, the, 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 uh, the framework on the canopy to but, match the but it's actually impressive that you were you thought enough about it to take a sample <laughs> with you, I, yep. mean, you I, know, I can I, to this day i can see the guy's look on his face he's just kind of looking at me like really <laughs> okay have been like this more the close we got and i Go think i still it. have that stupid bottle of paint <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing i used it for right well, you know, we had what we had. We had the square bottle testers and, <laughs> and Pactra. You know, and that, a little that Pactra it. and the little yeah, plastic that was about bottle. It. Yeah, and that was about yeah. it, other than mixing stuff. Yep. All, All right, right, Jim. This one was well, fun. Thanks yeah. for watching, everybody. Yeah. Appreciate it. As usual, take care of the people you love. And we'll see you later. <laughs>